Hey everyone, my name is Sean Hodgins, and as I'm sure a lot of you already know, I make a lot of open source projects. I make these projects open source so that other people can make them and learn about them. Unfortunately, a lot of these projects involve surface mount soldering, which people find daunting. I've made something that should show you that surface mount soldering really isn't that difficult. In fact, it's pretty easy. So hopefully this should help you learn. I've started to design what are called surface mount soldering challenges. And this is the first one I've made. These will be available online on my Tindy store. What's even better is patrons of a select tier will be sent one of these in the mail each time I come out with a new design. There's even a tier above it where I'll include all the components needed to assemble this board yourself. The only thing you'll have to get is the solder. First I'd like to thank Nick Sayer for coming up with the idea of the SMD challenge. You can check out his work in the link below. But today I have SMD challenge number one of my design and I'll be showing you two different ways to assemble it. One easy way, one hard way, and then I'll tell you what it does. So let's get to it. Okay, so I'm first going to start off with the harder way, which is soldering it by hand with a soldering iron. We're using 0805 components on this, so it's not too bad. A 603 is also okay, and you don't really ever want to do 0402 by hand because it's just kind of painstaking. Get the soldering iron turned on get all our components. So since there aren't too many components on this, got our soldering iron and a clean tip. I just like to go through and put a bead of solder, whatever you want to call it, on one pad of each component. Only one pad. The reason we're doing this is because you're going to use that one pad of solder to hold the component down in place so that you can solder the other ones. Now you're going to take your component, which should hopefully have a label and a name on it for where it goes on the board, and you're going to put a little bit, this isn't really necessary, but it makes your life easier, put a little bit of flux on the side that you just tinned or added solder to, pick up your component, line it up with where it has to go, and touch the soldering iron to that pad, making sure to contact also the component. Now one side is attached, you can then apply solder to the other side without worrying about it moving. Just like that, the component's on the board. You have to remember with the LED, you want to make sure that it's pointed in the right direction because they're directional, the capacitors and resistors are not. And you also want to make sure you don't leave the soldering iron on them too long because they can melt and you can destroy them, but it's actually pretty difficult. Then with the 505 chip, you want to make sure that the chip is in the right orientation. So pin number one is in the bottom right. So as long as it's in that orientation, then you solder it on. And you'll notice that I used a bit of flux on the pins. It just makes things a lot cleaner if you use it right away and then you can just touch the soldering iron that has solder on it and it will just wick up the solder onto the pin. It's really simple. And then lastly for the battery connector on the back, sometimes these can absorb a lot of heat so it might be beneficial to either turn up your soldering iron or you'll just have to leave it on there a bit longer and wait for the solder to flow onto this metal because this can absorb a lot more heat so it'll take longer for it to the solder to want to stick to it. So, it's done, and that was about five minutes, wasn't too bad. So this time we're going to use solder paste, and this should go a lot faster, but it will require the use of a reflow oven, in this case a $20 toaster oven. So the first thing I'm going to do is put a little bit of solder paste on each one of the pads as precisely as I can. Then just like we did before, we're going to put the components on and carefully mount it into the toaster oven. The most important thing is that the solder paste is touching both the pad of the circuit board and the component because 
if you don't have one of the sides, say a resistor isn't touching the solder paste on one of the pads, surface tension is going of the solder is going to pull the resistor to the other pad and may just pull it away from the other one and it won't solder. So as long as both pads are touching solder paste and they're both touching the component, then it should be good. Carefully pick it up. Put it in. Near the front where you can see it. And I've got the toaster oven set to 230 degrees C, which is as hot as it goes. And you just turn it to stay on. And we're just going to visually watch it reflow. This is actually the cheapest toaster oven you can buy. It's about $20. Anything should probably work if this works. You can see the solder starting to spread out a bit. Have some needle nose pliers ready. They're starting to flow. And once they've all flowed, I leave it in there for a few more seconds, which is now. Then you just turn it off. And I immediately pull it out of the oven. I normally have a little fan blowing on it, but I didn't set it up this time. And once I'm sure everything's hardened, then I will probably gonna mess this up. Take this out. Everything's on there now, but it's just hot. And I'll throw it on a surface that will cool it down. In this case, a heat sink. I normally have a few of them kicking around. Now, since we have to put the metal clip for the battery on the back, I could just solder it on like I did before. But since we're only using the oven, I'm going to use low temperature solder, which uses bismuth. I'm going to use that on the bottom, then we'll flip it over and put it back in the oven. You don't have to do this, you can just use a soldering iron like I showed before. See how much faster that was? So there we have it. Two boards done in about 10 minutes. Now the time wasn't that much different for this board because there's only, what, like 8 components on it? But that time exponentially increases when you try doing it with a soldering iron as you add parts to the board. So. What this board does is, as you can see, blinks a light. It's got a 555 timer on it and also a thermistor. So as you heat it up or cool it down, the light will start blinking faster or slower. And the change isn't that dramatic, but of course you can also change the components around and experiment if you want and try different things. But the point is to learn about surface mount soldering before ruining one of your own projects. So you can ruin this first and learn and fix your mistakes and then move on to more difficult things. So if you want to support me and my open source projects, consider becoming a patron. Patrons get extra benefits like the SMD challenges. You'll be sent them as I create new ones and way before they're on my Tindy store because I'm always behind on that. Of course, as always, there's no pressure and if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, you're also going to be notified when these projects and other projects are released. So hit that subscribe, hit that like if you like this video, and as always, everyone, be good and have a good day. Mm -hmm.